another really interesting event in the current sky. In a couple of weeks, on May 9th, the lunar nodes are going to change their signs. The north node, the dragon's head, Rahu, will ingress into Leo, the lion. And the south node, the dragon's tail, Ketu, is going to ingress into Aquarius. And any transit has implications on a social grand big level, but those social implications affect different individuals differently. Everybody doesn't experience the same thing at the same time. So how can you know if it's going to affect you in a significant way? Look in your birth chart. See if you have planets in Leo or Aquarius. If you have planets in Leo or Aquarius, something significant is going to happen as those nodes come to the point, the degree, where your planets are located. It's not only exactly when the node will be on your degree of your planet, but it's as the node approaches the degree, the thing begins to intensify. And as it gets just a little bit before that exact degree, you get that most significant event, usually. And then as it moves on, it goes away. As it moves over the degree and then leaves, then the effect, the trigger goes away. In addition to planets, also count the house cusps. The most important would be the ascendant, the midheaven. The basic way to interpret a transit from a node is that the node is going to bring chaos, uncertainty, unrest to the symbolism of whatever planet it triggers by transiting. So if you have, say, a 10th Lord in the 8th house or a Sun in the 8th house or something, so that's the, you have some interpretation of that. The interpretation is that you're famous in a small set, smaller set, an underground circle, a niche set, or that your career is of a limited appeal or something, or that your identity is very subcultural. And then when you have whatever your interpretation may exactly be because of the aspects and whatever dignities, whatever the interpretation is for a planet, when it gets transited, that gets triggered by the energy of the transiting planet. So what energy does Rahu Ketu, the, the nodes add, what do they trigger with? They trigger with their uncertainty, with their upsetting, because their mission, their objective is change, transformation. That's their fundamental objective. That's why they cause eclipses, to shock everybody. So they are causing change by, by creating unrest and uns uh, unsettlement. <clears throat> so a transit from Rahu Ketu may not sound like a vacation, but it, can, it also it indicates some new thing is about to happen, and it gives a new opportunity to come to a different level, come to a new level in life, or to come to a new chapter. So when you have a transit from Rahu or Ketu to a significant planet in your chart, you get a significant chance to come to a new level or a new understanding or a new chapter with the symbolism of that planet, whatever that thing represents in your chart. Rahu and Ketu have slightly different flavors to how they unsettle things and what kind of direction they move you in. Rahu, the north node, moves you up and out and forward. So it tries to unsettle things to become bigger and more externally projected or higher. K2, the south node, unsettles towards the inward and downward and backward. So K2 unsettles things to bring them back to some way that they were before or to bring them deeper and condense them. With that information, if you have a little bit of a, of a knack for it, you can look at your birth chart and get your own specific interpretations of what this transit is going to mean to you and at what time. Not all transits are equally important for a number of reasons. They don't all take the same amount of time. That's the first reason. If a transit is happening slowly, then it happens to you for longer and it generates a bigger effect. <clears throat> so, as a rule of thumb, the slower planets, Saturn, Jupiter, and the nodes, they create bigger effects by their transits because they, they take that transit for a longer time. But another important rule of thumb is that the motion of the planets is not constant. 
So you have to watch and see, is the planet slowing down or speeding up? If the planet is transiting over your chart point while it's moving quickly, then even if it's a Saturn, then it's not as going to be as intense as a usual Saturn transit. But if it's a transiting over your chart when the planet is slowing down, and you can really easily spot a slowdown because it gets to the slowest point right before it turns retrograde or right before it changes from retrograde to direct. So if you have a point in your chart, like a planet or a cusp, right on that, close to that spot where the planet is changing from retrograde to direct or vice versa, that's a significant transit. Even if it's a quick planet like Mercury or Venus, because even a quick planet will slow down and take some time on that spot where it's changing direction. And a third principle is that one transit is significant, especially if it's a slow transit, but two transits is much more significant. And usually very significant events will happen in your life when there's more than one significant transit happening at the same time. Especially if they are involving counter planets. Like, for example, if you have Rahu going over your Saturn at the same time that you have Saturn in transit going over your natal Rahu, that's like monumental. And the fourth principle has to do with Dasha systems, which are utilized in ancient Persian astrology, but are really these days mostly the monopoly, almost you might say, or the specialty of Indian Vedic astrology. So with the Dasha system, it tells you what planet has its pattern, <clears throat> its rhythm, its tempo at that given time. Not by transits, but by something else. So if you have having a transit of a Dasha planet, if you're in a current cycle of a, of a Dasha planet, like, like if you're currently in a Rahu cycle, and there's a Rahu transit or a transit to your natal Rahu, the effect from that will be more significant. As for the social wide scale general implication of Rahu and Ketu going into Leo and Aquarius respectively, it's extremely interesting. Rahu Ketu, they're called a dragon head and a dragon tail because the dragon goes in to like the sea or something or the clouds on one side and then slithers around and comes out on the other side but there's actually one dragon and uh, they're known as Rahu and Ketu in Indian astrology because they're one creature, a demon whose head was cut off and thrown into one part of the sky and his body was thrown into the opposite part of the sky so there's still one creature Rahu and Ketu are one creature at two different poles, always 180 degrees apart. So the key to interpreting them together is that they highlight some important polarity. So the polarity between Leo and Aquarius is ego and humility. And so what Rahu and Ketu in these two signs it sim signifies is that dichotomy between selfishness and selflessness, strong ego, weak ego, between ego and humility, that's really the key. Learning how to deal with opposites is the key to learning how to deal with the issues that Rahu and Ketu indicate. One common approach to opposites is to pick one and say, oh, I like this one and I hate that one. Probably 80% of the time, that's what we do. And that's the most st stupid one to do. Because everything has pros and cons, and everything has times and places where it's useful and applicable. So just to say, well, I like this side of the spectrum and not that side of the spectrum, you know that you're going to come up short some of the time. It's not a very wise choice. So the second approach to opposites, then, is to try to balance them. Okay, well, then we need a little bit of ego, and we need a little bit of humility. But the problem with that approach is you can never balance them. You can't balance opposite things. They destroy each other. And they conflict with each other. So the third approach, which is the most enlightened approach, is to change your opinion of the two things and to figure out how the two things are not at all opposites. 
They're opposite ends of one thing. They're two sides of one thing. There's a dragon tail and a dragon's head. There's a head and a body. They belong together. They're not really separated. To figure out how these two things can be mutually supportive and integrated is the key to dealing with Rahu Ketu energy, to dealing with opposites. And so in the case of uh, Rahu and Leo and, Aqu and Ketu and Aquarius, there's going to be a tendency to overemphasize ego, overemphasize the importance of the self, and shy away from the importance of others in integration. It might have something to do with America because that just makes sense right now. Because we have this new wild situation going on in America with a lot of Leo. Literally, the president over there is a Leo ascendant. And literally, he's doing all kinds of crazy ego things with America. So that's probably one of the big implications right now. Is this is going to become a real significant issue. We have to resolve this right now. It can't just be me-centric. Everything is for me. America first, everybody else 99th. So that's going to be a resolution point over the next year and a half that can't go on. If it goes on, it's going to cause serious problems. But in your personal life, it's the same thing. In personal life, 99% of the time is much more important than political life. You have to learn how to resolve the issue between the importance of self and the importance of others. How do you do that? You do that in the same way that the country would do that, by understanding that we exist in a world with other people. So the benefit of ourself is linked with the benefit of others. If everybody around you is wealthy and you're poor, that's good for you because if everybody else around you is poor and you're poor, that's miserable. If everybody around you is wealthy and you're poor, you can get help. So the benefit of others is beneficial to the self too. Let others become prosperous. Help others become prosperous. That benefits you. You're part of this society. You don't exist independently from the rest of the world. That's what Rahu and Ketu and Leo and Aquarius is trying to make us understand. That the ego isn't isolated from the whole. So the service and benefit of the whole is of extreme value. It's a first value to the ego, to the self. And counterly, which usually is more the case when Rahu's on the other side in Aquarius, counterwise, the strengthening of the self is not egotistical, the strengthening or, or self-serving. The strengthening of the self is important in order to serve the whole. But that issue is usually more when it's opposite, when you have Rahu on the other side, when you have Rahu in, Aqu in Aquarius, then usually the push is towards uh, being self self negating but now the current transit that we have is Rao coming into Leo where the push is towards overemphasizing self interests so let's see how that plays out for you keep up with this post keep your you know over the next year and a half it would be really cool if you in the comments you note down as the things as Rahu comes to your natal points you could use this comment section as like a public transit diary, and then everybody can benefit from studying it. So thanks a lot. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, do all those kinds of wonderful things for me. Thank you. Radhe. Right